Meow everybody, this is Cross Kitty Paw. In this little tutorial, I'm going to show how to set up the 2D eyes for the cat gen avatar that I'm working on. Currently, it's in beta. It's just a part of the Meow Near Cat base for now. But soon, hopefully, I'll have a release for it. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I did. So we have, here have two sets of eyes. We have these 2D eyes here on the avatar, which need to be driven. They're not controlled by any bone that can realistically be run by VR Chat. What VR Chat does is it rotates um, your bones on the X or Y or Z axis, whatever you tell for the bone that you have set up. Sadly, for 2D eyes, that doesn't work too well. Even with these eyes, which have their own vertices independent of texture maps, they can't really move flat along a surface. In the past, to get around this, what I did was I put eye bones like three meters behind the avatar. So that way, it would move the eyes mostly on a on a flat surface if you moved it by a few degrees. But this would cause a lot of issues in VR chat because the eyes are moving by only one to three degrees and the eye tracking, I don't know exactly how the depth tracking works, but it just, it would just freak out. And a lot of times the avatar would go cross-eyed and have other issues. But now with contact receivers and senders, we can use those to gather data from VR chat simulated eyes and pass it along to an animation for the 2D eyes. So for here, I'm going to go ahead and show the actual eyes, which are underneath the visor. So this avatar has a removable visor that has the original OG eyes below it. These run through VRChat's normal simulated eye tracking, um, as shown in the um, here in the avatar descriptor. So it goes through these two eye, eye bones. What I did was I put a contact sender and two contact receivers around the left eye. For my fizz bones, I always put them on um, empty objects. This helps when turning them off. I've noticed that, at least in my experience, when turning on and off a game object, um, it's a little bit faster than turning off game physics, which is important for this setup because we have a contact receipt uh, sender that spawns inside two contact receivers. From my testing, sometimes when a contact sender is inside a contact receiver, a proximity contact receiver, it will stop sending any data at some point. I don't know why this bug happens, but it's most common on load in. Basically, when this avatar loads in, the contact sender will sometimes not send any data when it's inside the contact receivers. So it needs to be toggled on and off periodically. Um, for my testing, it's only when loading in. Um, but that being said, how it works overall is it has this very, very, very tiny contact um, sender. I don't know if you can really see it, but pokes out the little Liel line, pokes out ever so slightly along the Z line, the Z axis. And as the um, as the actual uh, bone for VR chat moves, it'll move it um, with inside these two um, larger spheres here. What I'm trying to accomplish in this is to approximate the X and Y direction as if the sender was on a 2D plane and the spheres were recording it on a 2D plane. Sadly, it doesn't work perfectly because the spears are, of course, round. Um, so there'll be a little bit of wobble in the method. But overall, it works pretty well for getting across the idea. There might be a better way to do this. Um, I had, couldn't really think of any, especially since at the time of recording, um, contact receivers, if they're capsules, they will not um, record um, proximity data. They only contact enter data. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or intended, um, but with this app, it's still pretty good. Basically, you want the contact center to be very, very small compared to the receiver, so that when it's inside the receiver, it's near the very edges, and it's closest to approximating a linear motion. Um, so in this case, the contact receiver will output um, values between um, about 0 0.01 to 0 0.15. So it's pretty close to the edges. So it reduces the wobble a little bit. If I go into VR chat, uh, I'll try to keep this where I think the screen recording is. Mm -hmm. I set up my avatar so that um, I have uh, animation on the um, jester layer that controls the VR chat eye bone. Um, in order to get this to work, I had to unpair the eye bone and the humanoid rig um, on import um, because the you can still move the eyes in the humanoid rig but I haven't found a way to make it as reliable moving because um, it uses this uh, weird 
uh, rotation of one instead of like degree rotation. So it gets a little bit weird. So I just put it, I just unbound the bones and I made a um, two radial puppets so I can exactly control um, where the eyes are. And I use these to put the eyes in the exact position. And then using the, uh, where is it, the debug menu, I was able to get the values. Let's open up the debug. And this avatar has a ton of variables. But um, the more important one is the uh, contact I Y and the contact I X. Um, so as I move these, let me go back to the radio puppets. As I move the radio puppets, those um, float values will change. And I use this to get um, nine different float values. So where the float value is and when the eyes are at um, center, and then when they're you know farthest to the left, um, farthest uh, to left or right, farthest up or down, and then those the cord the um, the points at the edges. Uh, the more points you get, theoretically, the more accurate it will get. But with these small values, there's an issue that we run into, which is um, VR Chat is only putting out two decimal places. I don't know how many did or how much bits are in these floats, but they seem to have a pretty good accuracy out to at this extreme. Uh, um, but I it just only reports two digits, so finicking around with the values can definitely improve the wobbleness. Um, let me see if I can show you the wobbleness. Uh, I think the wobbleness... Yeah, you can see it on the Y. Hopefully you can see in this video, but as I'm passing through the center, it wobbles a bit um, to side to side. And as I go near the bottom, it definitely wobbles back and forth. If you improve where the location is and you get them more accurate, then two decimal points can show that that typically goes away a little bit. Um, and assuming you can get more points, it'd probably make it even better. Um, so I'll go ahead and show what that looks like inside VR or inside Unity. So we have the spears, and those will record the data. And then if I go to the animation layers, I can show what I'm doing. Uh, if I can remember where I put those uh, layers, caption. So I'll start with just the gesture layer. This is how I controlled the eyes for testing. I just have this test layer here. Um, the only point of this is to get the um, the data used for the other blend tree. So this blend tree is just moving around the VR chat eyes. Um, another way of doing this is just to preset the eyes to a certain um, location. And I think it's clipping on my screen, so I'm just going to go ahead and move it over. But I have this blend tree that has nine points, and those are the eyes, um, the VR chat that controlled eyes and their maximum positions. I have to have eye look disabled when I'm using this. Um, but this allows me to get the, the maximum values. The other way to do it is just manually move the eye bone to where you want it to be, then upload into VR chat and get the value. Um, if you have an app or something that allows you to run the VR chat um, contact stuff and get the, the values out, then you can do it that way. I don't have any um, add-ons to do that. I'm sure I think there is some, but I don't have any. Um, and then once I have that, I um, use that use that data from uh, the contacts to put into the actual eye movement. So for here, um, show it again. Whoops, grab the VR chat accent. Um, I have another 2D blend tree, and I'm going through nine points again. But they make a really wonky shape. It's not a perfect square anymore. Um, instead, it's you can kind of see how it's distorted by the um, spear um, words. If you were to draw a, long, a line along this, it would probably be very curved um, and be a very weird kind of lattice curve shape. Um, it's fairly close to linear compared to if you use like a whole spear or some other issues or other setups. Um, so this was the best I could get. Um, another thing to note is if you have the spears too close to um, the collide, the um, excuse me, not the collider, the ascender, it won't work because there'll be two solutions. Um, where it's a triangulation problem, um, and you, the the spears will collide with each other at two different points. For each spear has its own radius, and what it's reporting is its radius. And uh, the the cir circle kind of setup will have uh, 
two solutions. Um, you don't want those two solutions to pop up inside your your window. You only want one of those solutions to exist. Otherwise, you'll need a third point, um, which gets into more fancy math to triangulate it, um, which is doable, but um, I just wanted to do something more simple with the 2D setup. So um, it maps all right. Um, that's how I got it to work. Um, and this is for a, uh, a a second bone. There's a there's a second set of eye bones on the visor itself. I bring back the visor um, and shrink it down to zero just to show. But there's a second set of eye bones under here, and it's controlling those. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so I can move these eyes as much as I want um, using the bones. Um, but you can drive blend shapes. Um, animations that move textures along their UVs or other methods to move 2D eyes. Um, the big point is you just want to get that data outside of the uh, side of your chat simulated eye tracking. So I hope that explains what I did. If you have any questions, just let me know.